this. We are looking at uh, an example again with scale factor. So I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to zoom in for a second after I've read this. It says, given that the scale factor is 2 over 50, what are the dimensions of the real cup? So if I zoom in here, oh, I can't go much closer than that. We have a Tim Hortons coffee cup, and this little tiny picture of it, at the top it says the dimensions or the diameter is 2 centimeters, and the height of the tiny little picture is 5 centimeters. But then we're told what the scale factor is for this picture. So it's a basically a calculation to help us to determine how to work with scale factor. If this says 2 over 50, for starters, let's reduce that as much as we can. What's a better, easier way for us to work with that? What is that the same thing as? Yeah, good. So I can say the scale factor, I'm just going to abbreviate it like this, is 1 over 25. So same thing as this, but we just reduced it because it's always easier to work with a 1 rather than having to multiply larger numbers. You're going to get the same end result if this will just make the calculations easier. So then, when we're dealing with scale factor, it has to do with ratios or proportions. Everybody knows what I mean by that? Where we set one side equal to the other side. And so, when we look at this, we would have 1 over 25 equals, well, if we're talking diameter or width and height, what do you think the one is? Is that the height or the diameter? That's going to be the diameter, right? The smaller side? Does that make sense? I'm not going to write it. And the 25 would be the height of it, right? So when I set this equal to what we're trying to work with here, do you see that at the top, what's going to go at the top, the two centimeters here or the five centimeters here? Yeah, we always want to match things up and keep things consistent. So if the smaller dimension, if the diameter is at the top, then I'm going to keep it consistent when I'm talking about my picture here. At the bottom, I would have, well, actually when we're doing this calculation, I'm trying to figure out what this measurement would be in the actual real life size. There's different ways we can do this calculation. I'm going to split this up to just zoom in and focus on this for a moment. So do you see that X is what we are looking for, which is the diameter of the actual real life size of the coffee cup? So then we use our algebra skills. I don't want to have an X at the bottom. What's a way that I could pull the X up to the top if algebra is all about opposites? Yeah, so we could cross multiply. Everybody remember and know how to cross multiply. But ultimately what we're doing, if I broke it down step by step, is it's like we're taking both sides and multiplying them by x, right? So on the left-hand side, I would have x equals, and then I want to do the same thing to get rid of the 25. So do you see I can cross multiply that up top? So I would end up getting x equals how many centimeters? 50 centimeters because I multiplied the 2 centimeters by the 25 there. If that's confusing, maybe I'm not going to skip steps because I see the confusion in your eyes. X over 25 equals 2 centimeters is what we had for the next step, right? And then if at this point I want to get rid of the 25 using the step-by-step -step method that we've been learning, then I would multiply both sides by 25 because algebra is all about opposites. And that is ultimately how we got the x equals, when we put these together, it would be 50 centimeters. So there's a portion of our answer. We know how wide it is. The diameter, so I'm just gonna put diameter, so we know what that is. So far so good? We're going to use the same system or the same setup to now figure out what the height, what the real height would be. 
So we have the image height, we want the object height, we want the real height. So we can still use this 1 over 25 because that's our scale factor that's been given to us. And we would this time set it up to make it, well, what would go at the top? The 1 is representing the image, right? So we're going to make this 5 centimeters this time. And I'm going to make this X because we're looking for what the real life height would be, the object height. And do you see this time I am going to skip steps because we went through the step-by-step -step process in the last one. But we could take this and cross multiply both of these so that we would end up on the left side with just an X. And on the right side, what would we end up getting? 25 times 5, which is? Yeah, 125, and it would still be centimeters, which is our actual height, which seems a little more realistic.